Why Evolution Does Not Work Episode 4 Why Can't Natural Selection Get Rid of Bad Mutations? Answer Natural selection can get rid of some bad mutations, but not all of them. This causes increasing genetic load of bad mutations that lead to extinction of the species. Details 1. Sledgehammer Natural selection is like trying to use a sledgehammer to repair a watch. Natural selection can only kill, destroy the watch. It has no ability to go into the internal mechanism of the watch to carefully repair it like an intelligent watchmaker can. For each unique bad mutation that you want to completely get rid of from the population, natural selection has to cause at least one genetic death, that is, zero offspring, to remove the individual from the line of reproduction. This process becomes more difficult when we have recessive genes which can shield the mutation from immediate genetic death of the individual. In that case, a number of children can have the recessive gene, which allows the bad mutation to spread to a larger fraction of the population before the bad mutation is expressed in many individuals in the population, and so more genetic deaths are required to get rid of that one bad mutation. For this reason, for biologically realistic situations in higher creatures, it is estimated that it can take 30 times the size of the population in genetic deaths to completely eliminate one bad mutation, mutated gene, from the population. 2. Accumulation The only way that natural selection can remove a bad mutation from a population is by genetic death of the individual, i.e., either physical death before reproduction or by causing complete infertility. A mere drop in fertility will still transmit bad germline mutations down to the next generation. And it will take many generations for such a bad mutation to be eliminated from the population. So the process is very inefficient, which means that bad mutations will keep accumulating in the population. This accumulation is because new bad mutations keep arising in the population, while the first bad mutation is still being gradually reduced in the population. 3. Extinction the number of bad mutations in a population is vastly higher than the number of individuals in the population. So, as an edge case, selection would have to kill off the entire population to remove all bad mutations from the population. 4. Invisible The vast majority of mutations are harmful but not visible to natural selection, i.e., the fitness drop from the mutation is smaller than what selection can see. So, those mutations are not removed from the population but instead are carried down the generations. In addition, each generation adds new harmful mutations. So this load of genetic bad mutations increases from generation to generation. This process is called genetic load in the scientific literature. 5. Genetic load. This genetic load process increases the harmful but not visible mutations in the population from generation to generation. This continues until the load becomes so high in the population that it crosses a critical zone threshold after which the population crashes and goes extinct. 6. Error Catastrophe High genetic load above a critical threshold triggers error catastrophe, e.g., where the replication machinery itself has errors, and so the rate of error creation increases rapidly, and the population rapidly declines into extinction. 7. Failure All of this points to the fact that random chance and natural selection cannot provide constructive evolution at the scale needed to create completely new phyla, higher taxa, and completely new body plans. Therefore, random chance and natural selection cannot create the entire biosphere. Eight limits. So, random chance and natural selection are limited to microevolution, adaptation of a species to fit the environment inside a genus or family. But they cannot cause naturalistic megaevolution, i.e., naturalistic single cell to human evolution. 9. Intelligent Design All of this points to intelligent design infusion of new biofunctional information at the base of each bush of life, each of the higher taxa, phylum, class, order. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.